It has become common knowledge now on YouTube that the Sega Master System was hugely successful in Brazil. I have covered some of the reasons as to why this was the case within another video on this channel entitled Is the Master System Worth Playing Today? So if you want to know more about the system's global history then I suggest you watch that video at some point. A factoid I would like to mention is that I shall not be included in any games which were just bespoke hacks for the Brazilian market on this list. Basically the games where the characters and the title screens etc were swapped out for well known Brazilian characters. This list will be the mass system games you could only play in Brazil, so there will be no palette swap nonsense today. Let's get this list underway, yeah! Ariel the Little Mermaid was released for the Master System. Something of note about this one is despite the game being based on the 1989 movie, the game's story bears little resemblance to that of the movie. The player guides one of either Ariel or King Triton through underwater levels similar to that of Echo the Dolphin, and the player can move in any direction. Both of the characters however play exactly the same. Side characters from the film like Flounder and Sebastian also make appearances and can aid the player in their quest. The game received extremely mixed reviews on release. In Baku Baku Animal, released on the Master System in 1996, the player must line up falling blocks of animals and foodstuffs. When an animal is aligned adjacent to a tile of its favoured food, the animal eats the food. Larger groups of connected food of the same type score higher when eaten. When animals eat the food, they make random blocks fall on the opponent's area. The object of the game is to make one of the opponents not be able to place more blocks. Reviewers at the time stated that the game is simple and accessible, yet has enough strategic possibilities to engage even veteran players. The game is essentially basic, non-threatening fun that anyone can enjoy. Battletoads in Battle Maniacs was developed by Rare in 1993 and exclusively ported to the Master System in Brazil. The game follows two Battletoads called Rash and Pimple on their quest to stop Silas Volkmeyer and the Dark Queen from taking over the world. This is a typical Battletoads game split over six stages and based in Gamescape, a virtual world run amok with computer generated foes created by Silas. The game was praised for its varied gameplay, however it has been criticised for being a little bit too difficult. Bonkers Wax Up is a Brazil exclusive following two other Bonkers titles released on both the SNES and the Mega Drive, aka the Genesis, initially released back in 1994. The game series is based on an animated Disney series also called Bonkers, which was a spin-off from an earlier series called Raw Toonage, which aired between 1993 and 1994. The game is also available on the Game Gear for those who wish to be able to have a go and cannot speak Portuguese. The purpose of the game is to explore a haunted mansion, collecting clues for your investigation. The game is a platformer which feels more like a 2D maze game. You defeat enemies by jumping on them. This is a bit odd really jumping on enemies since Bonkers is a police officer and he doesn't even carry a bloody gun either. Some advice on the game is it is a little bit on the easy side due to the fact that the setup of the levels makes it very easy to avoid enemies as opposed to defeating them. On the whole it can be an enjoyable experience but will lack the difficulty required to keep dedicated gamers interested. Castelo Ra Timbum is a master system game based off a Brazilian children's television show in which shares the same name. The basic story of the game is that one of the characters, Zaquinum, drinks a potion in which turns them into a baby. Two of the character's friends named Pedro and Bieber must find four ingredients to make an antidote to this problem. Castelo Ra Timbum is an action and adventure game. The player can choose to play as either Pedro or Bieber to search for the ingredients through five levels. The only difference really between the two is that Bieber is a little faster than Pedro. Each level involves some platforming and minor puzzle solving elements, like jumping over the right sequence of platforms or finding food inside the kitchen's drawers in the right order. To enter each level, the player must choose the right door based on the doorkeeper's tips. All the text in the game is in Portuguese, however you are not missing much if you fail to play this game anyway. Echo the Tides of Time is an action adventure video game developed by Nova Trade International, published by Sega and released for most of Sega's then supported gaming consoles in 1994. It is the second game in the Echo the Dolphin series and the Tides of Time continues the story of the first game and featured similar gameplay with a few new additions. The most famous version of this game is obviously on the Sega Mega Drive, however the Sega Master System received a port of the game exclusive to Brazil. It is reported the game is very slow paced and difficult, but for fans of the series it may well be worth the effort. The gameplay is varied and the graphics look good for the system anyway. 
I am not going to be able to pronounce the name of this game right, but I might as well try anyway. Ferias Frustradas do Picapau, which roughly translates as Woody Woodpecker's Frustrated Holiday, or Frustrated Vacation for you American English speaking people watching today. It's basically a platform video game developed and published by Tectoy for the Sega Mega Drive and the Sega Master System. It was released in Brazil only. The game is a platformer and the player takes the role of Woody Woodpecker. Gameplay is varied but there are many complaints about the controls which stop the game being as playable as it should be. Being described by some as being slow, unresponsive and jump controls which are impossible to, well control I suppose. Overall it seems to be one to skip unless you are really masochistic. The 1994 platform game Dynamite Heady, developed by Treasure and published by Sega, is a critically acclaimed classic on the Sega Mega Drive. The world received a scaled down port of this game for the Sega Game Gear, however only the Brazilians received a port of this version of the game on the big screen on the Sega Master System. Like in the 16-bit version, Heady can throw his set of enemies to defeat them and use it to pull himself to various areas and move objects. The player can find a wide variety of heads which act as power-ups that provide different effects and alter gameplay. The 8-bit version of this game is not as good as its 16-bit counterpart, since the head power-ups aren't as strategically important, leaving the player no reason not just to stick with the original head. Nonetheless, for an 8-bit game, this is a good effort and it's still worth experiencing if you are a fan of the series. Overall, the game still features impressive graphics, enjoyable action gameplay and numerous secrets. Legend of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse's Magical Crystal, was released in Brazil in 1997, after having been released in Japan initially in 1995 on the Game Gear, under the name of Mickey Mouse Densetsu no Ukaku. It is the last game in the Illusion series of games, and unlike other Illusion games, Mickey defeats enemies by throwing bars of soap at them to defeat them, rather than by bouncing on them. There are puzzle levels, a scrolling shooter level and multiple endings. Although the game has good quality graphics and was deemed worth playing, the sound has been criticised and the game has been labelled as being a bit too easy. Overall though, this is one that is definitely worth checking out I suppose. The 1994 critically acclaimed classic Earthworm Jim also saw an exclusive Brazilian port to the Sega Master System. This run and gun platforming video game developed by Shiny Entertainment features an Earthworm named Jim in a robotic suit who battles evil. The 8-bit port features all of the insane wacky sense of humour of its 16-bit counterparts, however this scaled down version lacks the same graphical detail of the other versions. The game can also sometimes suffer from choppy animation and the lack of buttons can sometimes make the game more difficult to control. But come on, this is bloody Earthworm Jim, you know you want to try this one. Mickey's Ultimate Challenge is a video game starring Disney's Mickey Mouse and was published by High Tech Expressions for the Sega Mega Drive. A scaled down port was also made for the Sega Game Gear and of course in Brazil the Sega Master System. This game was primarily aimed at young children and it is a compilation of five simple Disney themed mini games. The game received very mixed reviews advising players that this is only suitable for younger players and that puzzle gaming veterans will get bored of it very quickly. The first ever FIFA game was entitled simply FIFA International Soccer. This now mammoth sized EA franchise only saw a mass system port of the game in Brazil. This is quite fitting really considering the sport is perhaps regarded higher in this region than it is in any other and the nation has even won the World Cup a record bloody five times. I have to admit, I am no connoisseur in football games, so I do not have much to say about this one really. It's just one of the thousands of bloody football games that have been released throughout history, and they're all pretty similar to me. Fire and Ice is a 1992 platformer in which is well known for its releases on the Amiga and the Atari ST. The goal of each level is to find the exit door and unlock it. To do so, a key is required, which consists of several pieces. Monsters will drop pieces of the key when killed, which requires the player to find and kill the monsters in each level. The Master System version of the game was released exclusively in Brazil. Critics regarded the game as an exceptionally well done platformer and it was rated Game of the Month in the August 1992 issue of Amiga Mania magazine with a rating of 92%. With the Master System version of the game though, there are a few key changes from the original Amiga version to accommodate for the weaker hardware. Levels are shorter and are less detailed and there are fewer enemies on the screen and Cool Coyote has been given green overalls, possibly to make him appear less like Sonic the Hedgehog. Apart from that though, the game is a worthwhile experience. 
The third installment of the Mortal Kombat series, Mortal Kombat 3, only made a Master System appearance in Brazil. The game retains all of the blood and gory attacks that define the series. The MS version of this game, like its Sega Game Gear counterpart, is severely stripped down and features fewer playable characters. The game also has far fewer frames of animation and fewer moves. In regards to an 8-bit Mortal Kombat, you are better off with sticking with the Master System version of Mortal Kombat 2, since it is an all-round stronger 8 bit port in general. Quest for the Shaven Yak starring Ren and Stimpy is a 1993 video game developed by Real Time Associates for Sega of America. The game was based on the Nickelodeon cartoon The Ren and Stimpy Show. Quest for the Shaven Yak is a 2D platform game and the player could choose to play as either Ren or Stimpy and face a variety of obstacles in classic platforming environments. The levels are fairly fun and the bosses are challenging and the music is decent. It isn't a perfect game by no stretch, but if you are a fan of the show, you may find some enjoyment in this one. Amazingly in Brazil, the Master System even received an 8-bit port of Street Fighter 2. This version of the game obviously isn't as good as its 16-bit counterparts, but it is certainly worth checking out for this game's novelty factor. It is also of note that some of the key fighters are also sadly missing from this conversion, such as Dao Sim and E Honda. The game overall is very playable and is animated pretty well. This one is worth adding to any collection due to the fact that it is bloody Street Fighter alone. Virtual Fighter Animation, known in Japan as Virtual Fighter Mini, is a 1996 versus fighting game. The main mode of gameplay is a story mode, which shows cutscenes between stages, and unusually for a Virtual Fighter game, this meant a restricted choice of characters, as each one is unlocked after being beaten in the story. Virtual Fighter Animations offers free viewing modes, normal, large and real time. Real Time was an effort to recreate the zooming camera effects of the 3D virtual fighting games by swapping between small and large sprites to represent distance. Overall this game is a pretty poor fighter. The fights are pretty clunky and the controls are bizarre and random seeming. You can literally just mash the kick buttons with most characters and win every fight on a first try. So this game is nothing special really. X-Men Mojo World is a video game released in 1996. The game starts off with Wolverine and Rogue as playable X-Men, and Gambit, Cyclops, Havox and Shard can be unlocked later on. The game shares the same engine as its predecessor X-Men Game Master's Legacy, and each character can activate his or her powers at will. For example, Wolverine can use his claws, Rogue can fly, Gambit can throw explosive cards, etc. Gameplay consists basically in finding a way out of each of the six levels. Once finding it, the character will face a boss, which are usually known characters from comics, like Magneto for example. Overall, this is a fun above average game for the platform, and if you are a fan of Marvel, you should check this one out. Taz in Escape from Mars, also known as Escape from Mars starring Taz, is a platform game developed by Head Games and published by Sega for all of their main platforms at the time. Obviously going along with the theme of this video, the Master System version was exclusive to Brazil. The Mega Drive version of this game received mixed reviews with some calling the game mediocre and citing dull simplistic graphics, whilst others claim the game is a major improvement over Sega's previous Taz game. In regards to this Master System version of the game though, the graphics, music, sound effects and even controls are vastly inferior to those of the Mega Drive version, but nonetheless fans of Taz may still enjoy this one regardless. The most controversial entry on this list today is Gunstar Heroes. Urban legend has it that there is a version of this game that turned up for the Sega Master System on eBay several years ago. Apparently the auction was stopped early, which led to all sorts of speculation. In all likelihood this was probably a hoax, but it is notable that an 8-bit version of Gunstar Heroes does exist for the Sega Game Gear, so a port for the Master System would not be completely out of the question. So I thought it would be worth mentioning this one, just since it's an interesting factoid nonetheless. So, there you have it, 19, possibly 20 Sega Master System games in which were only released in Brazil. Lucky for all of us though who live around the world, the Sega Master System is completely region free, making all of these games easily imported and played in other regions too. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of this list and even other lists you would like to see me tackle in the future. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel as this is one of the most active retro gaming channels on YouTube. I upload multiple new highly edited videos every single week. 
Thank you for watching today's video. Shout outs to Jarrett Tolzian, Mad Ape Productions, Andreas Larson, Peter Zidorn, Mike Frost, Edward O'Reilly, Andrew Bazanski, and all of my other patrons. Thank you all for your support. Yeah! If you want to be added to this prestigious list, then check out my Patreon page. Ta-ta and farewell.